Who's got questions? We'll start with Zach Taylor on your left. Marv, what's it been like these last two games? I mean, suddenly you guys obviously struggling against Arkansas and Mississippi State and now seem like you've turned things around. So what's the what's the mood been like in the locker room? Have you noticed a change? Um, most definitely been a change. You know, we're all just trying to be as one. You know, those games that we had uh, those last two weeks, it was like a, kind of like a separated locker room, you know, just uh, – trying to figure out what we needed to do to get better and come back together. So we definitely worked on our chemistry, just got back together, went back to, you know, coming coming in the locker room all as one, goofing around all as one, starting practice, you know, with a whole bunch of energy. Let's go to the front right to Cole, and then we'll go to Nuno. Don't worry, man. injuries are a part of the game, but what have you seen from younger guys such as Shamar, such as Edrin, such as Tyreek and Deuce mm-hmm. in, in coverage? Just how have they developed as quickly as possible to get into the SEC play? Uh, you know, just practicing hard and asking questions when they need the, you know assistance and just really just soaking up all the knowledge that they can. And then you're on a two-game winning streak heading into the bye week next week. What are you trying to prove to the fans? What are you trying to prove to more so yourself defensively going into this game against South Carolina? Um, really, there's nothing to really prove. It's just uh, continue working on the little things, working on our craft as a whole, communicating, uh, running after the ball, just being excited and having energy. Go in the middle to David Nuno from Texas, and then Brent. Marv, does it feel like a roller coaster year for you guys, how many different types of season you've had and just midway through? Um, I wouldn't call it a roller coaster. You know, you go through things. You know, it's the SEC, so it's every game's a tough week. So just sticking together is just what we needed to do. To the front, Brent from the Chronicle, and then the bat table. With Anias, how difficult a guy is he to defend with everything that he can do for an offense, and how valuable is it to have a guy like that? Oh, uh, man, Anias Smith, he's – Amazing play, you know, you can put him against anybody, you know, you can have him in the backfield, wide receiver, shoot, you can probably even put him at QB, who knows, <laughs> if we're being honest, but uh, just having that type of weapon, just with all the other other guys like Spill, Devon, he's just amazing, you know, just to have all these combinations on the field. Do y'all talk about, and it would need to you know, maybe like an Alabama slip up or whatever, but the, the idea that things are still in front of you or that there are still some possibilities for this season moving forward over the last five games? Oh, yes, sir. We just got to take it, you know, day, at a, day by day, practice by practice, game by game. Okay, thank you. No problem. So we'll go to the left side. We'll start with Kay and then Jenny. Uh, Coach Fisher has touched on turnovers a little bit and how important they are in the game. How does the defensive line play a role in helping out in that aspect of the game? Uh, just getting after the ball, giving, you know, giving pressure to the QB and just making them always have to throw those uh, those bad throws, getting after them. That's pretty much all we do. We'll stay at the bat table and go to Jenny. Hi, DeMarvin. How proud are you? How proud of, of Antonio Johnson are you, especially with how he played at home in his home state and especially with him getting his first career reception? Uh, I'm extremely proud of him, you know. I'm proud of him every single day, every, single day, every game. You know, he just has a young player. He just shows a lot of, like, he – He's very experienced. You know, he knows what he's doing. He knows the game. He loves it. So can't wait him just to continue. Let's go back behind the lights to Mike from KAGS and then Tyler. I got two quick ones for you, DeMarvin. Do you feel like the Anais of the defense with your ability to be so versatile on the line? Wait, say that again? Do you feel like the Anais Smith of the defense with your ability to be so versatile on the defensive line? <laughs> Um, I mean, I guess you can call it that. <laughs> <laughs> and then we talked earlier in the year, you guys talked about getting pressure and not just getting pressure, but turning those into sacks. Tyree had two against Bama. Michael Clemens stepped up. You had one against Missouri. What's been different that you guys haven't just gotten pressure on quarterbacks, but now you're actually taking them down? You know, we just applying what we worked on all throughout the off season and just countering back, you know, to the QB's uh, level, just getting after it. So go to you, um, Tyler in the back. It, kind of going off that a little bit, DeMarvin, you know, the, the offense has gotten a lot of attention on how you know they've <clears throat> improved during this winning streak. Uh, what's your take on the defense? I mean, have you seen um, you know you guys take a step forward these past couple of weeks? Oh, yes, sir, no question. You know, our linebackers like uh, Andre White, Coop, um, they're just getting off there the ball and they're attacking the ball with extremely – Dangerous violence, you know. There was a couple of planes where 
plays where 45 just zoomed through the offensive line and gets the tackle, and that's something that we've been waiting for, you know, that just to have those linebackers just attack and attack. And all together, the communication has definitely gotten better. And then this week, you're, you know, you're riding a two-game winning streak, hoping to make it three uh, against South Carolina. Just what do you expect the atmosphere to be like coming back home to Kyle Field? I mean, the last time you were here was the, the Alabama win. Uh, I expect the 12th man to come out like they always do, just ready to you know, cheer us on and celebrate when everything is going right and to help us out when you know, we come on that defensive side, just being as loud as they always have been. Let's go to the front here, to Travis and then Brent. Hey, Marvin, it's a little, little bit of a random one, but is there a particular thing about the Adidas gear that y'all get that you like the most, and, and what is it that you look for when you uh, kind of gear up and that you like about the gear that you get? Uh, the Adidas gear, um, I love it really, you know. It's just everything about Adidas is really like the shoes. They're nice. They look, they're comfortable. The um, Definitely the jerseys. I love the icy white. I love the icy white. Those is just clean. Let's go to Brent and then Cease. So I'll come out of right field on this one. Um, NIL, what has that experience been for you like so far? The most fun aspect of it, maybe the least fun and so forth? Um, I would definitely have to say NIL has been a different type of experience, a lot of business. And, you know, just the most exciting thing is just to pick different people's brains and, you know, just the knowledge of it, the you know, the business aspect of sports and the marketing behind it. And the least least fun the, of it. The least fun of it. Um, I wouldn't even say there's like nothing that's not fun about it. You know, everything is beneficial to my family, to myself. Right. So. And you talk about it being, it's almost like an educational experience as well. Mm -hmm. With the, Could you just kind of speak to that in terms of what you've learned? Almost like taking an extra class maybe in terms of the business sense? Yeah, that? it's definitely kind of like taking an extra class. And, you know, you have to be very particular about the things that you do you can't just be jumping to every single you know opportunity you have to dial down and see like what exactly is in like you know the um contracts and everything got time for a few more go to robert cessna and then justin what did the team learn in the <laughs> losses to arkansas and mississippi state moving forward um i would definitely say one thing that we learned was just that the little things are important Going for all the crumbs is was something that we need to do and not just do every now and then, but do every single play. Justin Woodard on your left, and we'll finish with Zach. Hey, DeMarvin, obviously this South Carolina series, a has gotten after him pretty, pretty good. Uh, mentally, going into a game where you've dominated a series like you guys have, does that change anything heading into Saturday night? Uh, no, sir. Playing this game just like we've played, you know, Bama, just like we played every other team. Just head down, not paying attention to the school board and getting after it. And I think Shane Beamer said that they're going to go back to Nolan at quarterback. He's a grad, a grad dude, so he's got a lot of experience. And your experience going up against a quarterback that's seen a lot of stuff, what's that like knowing that he's probably going to see some things that other quarterbacks may not have seen? Um, you know, just being aware of, the, like, you know, being, making sure that the pocket is constricted and just, you know, doing what we always do, attacking the QB, applying the most pressure. We'll finish up with Zach here on your left. You know, when Buddy left, there there were a few questions about the linebacking core. I mean, I know that Edrin, Aaron, and all those guys had experience already. But, I mean, how have you seen them grow this season, and how have they provided a, a strength there on the defense? Uh, they've definitely came together as a whole. You know, Buddy was the, the leader. He made all the calls. He made all the shots. And, you know, all of them guys, they work together. You know, they're all the leaders of that group. And, you know, that's – that's important because, you know, they all know that they can be beneficial in their own particular ways, and they just put those together, and it's, it's been working extremely well. Marv, we've got one more request from Brent. Got to follow up? I wanted to follow up on that crumbs quote. It's, you mm -hmm. said, is it grabbing the crumbs? Or? Yes, sir. Okay, where did that come from, and what exactly does that mean? Uh, just like the every opportunity, you know, just like um, if I'm able to make a sack, just i got to make it, uh, you know, um, doing my job, basically everybody doing their job, and just every single play. Is that a Jimbo thing, Jimbo thing? Uh, I would say both. <laughs> All right. Thank you. No Appreciate problem. it. God bless.